Thanks for joining us here on Breakfast Central. Time for our top story today. Have you seen the man known as Mr. Hudu Ari? The suspended Adamo State Independent National Electoral Commission, uh, Resident Electoral Commissioner uh, Hudu Yanusa Ari uh, may have absconded as the commission announced that it has no information on his whereabouts. So, can you look around your area, your compound, within your house? Can you find him? Well, Ari caused confusion during the Adamawa State Governorship Supplementary Election held on April 15 when he usurped the powers of the returning officer and announced the candidate of the All Progressives Congress, um, Aisha to uh, Binani uh, Dahiru, as winner, even when collation had not been concluded. Uh, thereafter, the commission immediately recalled him from Adamawa State and later announced his suspension, while President Mohamed Abari last week slammed a suspension on him for the act. The uh, National Commissioner of uh, INEC, uh, uh, Professor Sokoye, uh, announced his abscondment on Arai's uh, television where he said that uh, Ari had not reported to the headquarters of the Commission in Abuja several days after the electoral umpire summoned him. Now, joining us is uh, Adeni Ikunu, he's a, a political affairs analyst and, of course, uh, uh, communications uh, specialist. Uh, thanks for joining us, Mr. Kunu. Thank you very much for having me, and uh, it's right to say good morning to Nigerians. Thank you very much. Morning. Um, I mean, so the developments we're seeing here, you know, I'm guessing they are not necessarily shocking to you if you followed uh, stories from Nigeria for the last decade plus. Um, but I, I would like to get your reactions, you know, and if you thought that this would maybe play out different. Well, um, I never expected that... Um, and I could tell us that <clears throat> I beg your pardon. I never expected that I could tell us that a man uh, uh, that is an um, employee of the federal government will actually uh, just disappear. I have worked uh, in the nation's civil service with the federal government before I started working in the private sector. And one of the things that normally happens if you're given a uh, such level of query that usually comes from the headquarters is that uh, you just have to report as instructed in the query letter. It is very surprising uh, to hear such stories, especially uh, from Mr. Festus Okoye, that for the past three days, the man hasn't uh, been able to, uh, you know, respond uh, to the calls being made and all of that. You know, I, I was expecting INEC to be smarter, that after the incident of... Uh, announcing the results of an election that they've not completely collated, uh, the police officers who are also employees of the government would have actually taken him into custody. Uh, then uh, prosecution will begin immediately since it's been ascertained. Do not also forget that the president has mentioned that the person in question be obviously sacked, forget about the term suspended, that they used. Uh, Mr. Professor Soko should not have come on the national television to tell us that. Uh, the man in question uh, is not responding to calls. It actually makes INEC a very ridiculous commission that appears not to have its hand on the thing that it does. I have been in the civil service, and even when the situation appears not to favor uh, the institution, you are very careful with the kind of communication that you leave in public domain. So this is actually a circus uh, without animals. Well... I think I'm going to take it from where you just landed, circus without animals, but I'm going to say maybe the animals are involved. As we recall in um, sometime August 15, um, uh, where it was mentioned uh, the NTISF could not account for over 17 billion that was spent. And they did say that proud and ostentatious termites had eaten the money. We also heard the story of um, uh, snakes. Uh, they swallowed over 36 million naira here in Nigeria. And then monkeys cutting away with uh, funds and therefore there was no accountability. Uh, just during the elections as well, we saw a similar um, um, uh, character play out where uh, many have called on the INEC chairman that he did not follow the guidelines in the electoral playbook where he announced the winner without having confirmed. My question simply is, could it be that these actions have gone on to uh, forcibly uh, encourage and also empower others, such as uh, the man who's been looked for, to carry out measures of impunity without fear that anything will happen. 
you know, what is very surprising is um, in an election of this nature, and according to the constitution, INEX spells out how it wants the police to be involved in the election, uh, the kind of securities it's expected to provide, all of those things are specified by INEC. But you see, these are very extraordinary cases, uh, such as we've seen in Adamawa, where the police, uh, understanding the basics of what takes place in an election, were practically supporting a man who was basking in you know, the senselessness of illegality. I saw how they uh, were preventing those that were giving him the caution that the man shouldn't make such an announcement when the returning officer happens not to be there. And I think that you're very correct when you made reference to the incidents of West Snake swallowed money, which happened in Bainway. We were told that the lady got prosecuted, but we do not know how it went. We also have seen cases where money disappears at the NFF headquarters and nobody talks about it. I do not also forget at some point where they told us that they were trying to control uh, pests in Asso Rock. That's why they locked it down. All kinds of ridiculous things happen to empower people that are bent on making a mess of the processes of actually operating a government office. And this is actually one typical case. I, I have to say that it is enough that we had all of the very negative reactions, assessments and submissions following our elections on uh, March, uh, as well as March 18 and February 25 of this year. I thought that INEC, and by extension, the president should have understood that the only thing they needed to have done at the supplementary election was to make effort to actually preserve their image and not allow this to happen. Then let me say this, because many people do not want us to talk about it. Would we be wrong to say that perhaps the APC are being bent on actually are holding power in uh, Adamawa, sponsor this? That is something that we can uh, not verify independently. But for somebody who understands better uh, to have actually announced that for the ruling party, I think that there's something more than meets the eyes there. Uh, ultimately, uh, we'll be left to wallow in the pigsty of the things we do. But our work is to point it out that we are not part of those who want to destroy a nation that has offered us so much to this date, and that for every one of us, we have to actually endeavor to stand against these kinds of practices. INEC should produce this man, or INEC will be forever culpable in many of his deeds that it has been accused of. Uh, well, that would be an INEC that cares, you know, about being culpable or not. Um, you know, and of course, as much as we encourage INEC to produce him, you know, there's also the responsibility of Nigerian police force. If you remember, he had a police officer sitting right next to him while you know he of course uh, carried out the impunity that he's been accused of um and so you know we live in a very interesting country that's you know basically the, the moral of the story but i also want to you know ask you know a little bit further on INEC, um and of course their level of culpability and whether they care as, a, as an independent body uh, because if you see this play out then you would not expect that INEC from the 2023 elections with all the you know, allegations of fraud that went on in the 2023 elections. There's too many people that INEC should be producing, if we're being honest to ourselves. There are many of these pictures of altered result sheets that we've seen. There's many reasons why, um, you know, results were not uploaded on IREF. There's, there's too many. Even INEC said it themselves that, you know, their ad hoc staff, you know, were found wanting a lot during the elections. Nobody has been questioned, Mr. Kunu. There's not a word from anybody. You know, it's not a word from Mahmoud Yakubo. And this is the thing that I feel bothers me as, as a Nigerian, that the INEC chairman doesn't seem to understand the responsibility that has been placed in his hands to ensure that 200 million Nigerians have faith in the process that he was meant to handle and was given more than 300 billion naira to handle. He doesn't seem to understand that. And so when Yunusa you know, Ari disappears, disappears, and there's, it's, it's so easy for INEC as a body, to give excuses on his behalf that he can no longer be found we can't we can't locate him do you think that Mahmoud Yakubu understands what is at stake here or does he not care well i i must say that um uneasy lies the head that wears the crown and when anybody occupies such a very sensitive office 
Um, we may not cut them a slack uh, because the office has a lot of expectations. It is for them to sink or swim or to do whatever it is that has to be done to ensure that the processes are right. Um, let me give you an instance. There's a place in Dallas here called Cedar Hill. I was in conversation with um, a resident here, a, a Caucasian, because there was supposed to be an election in that particular city uh, where they wanted to raise bonds for certain projects in schools. And, you know, I took my time to speak with uh, the lady friend who took me through certain things that the people in the city perhaps should know and why they must not vote for the bonds because there are monies that you can have access to from the um, state government uh, headquarters in Austin, Texas here. And, you know, it brings to my heart how individuals are able to engage at that level. You see, one thing is that Professor Mahmoud Yakub has the responsibility. Maybe he doesn't understand the weight. Maybe he understands the weight of his task, but it was overwhelming. The reality is, what is the quality of human beings that the Nigerian system continues to produce? What is the quality of the human beings that we are? Because let me say this. When we talk about the Nigerian institution, the level of response, positive or negative, so things that are done in a country, in a state, in a local government, right or wrong, are a function of the level of civility of human beings. So for Professor Mahmoud Yagub, in the first place, he has his own part to play. And as I've said before we got to this conversation or this particular question, I said we may not cut the federal government a slack, we will not cut INEC a slack, and we will not cut Professor Mahmoud Yagub a slack. So perhaps there are certain things that he got boxed in the corner for. And please let me say this, please. I have also mentioned on some TV platforms and radio platforms that it is time for the president not to be appointing the person who heads INEC. Because let me say this, it is always going to be impossible or near impossible uh, for somebody who appoints you to office to actually have you do certain things that wouldn't be done. Look at that election. When the president finished voting, the president who understands the law, who helped that the Electoral Act, as amended 2022, becomes an Electoral Act, had to show Nigerians the person he voted for. And I've spoken to military officers who said that's actually the symbolism of the direction that the military officers and security agencies should take, which is that the party he voted for must be supported willy-nilly, because he wasn't supposed to show the ballot paper upon which it's unprinted. Even Professor Mahmoud Yakub has had some form of nonverbal communication from that particular thing that the president did. How then do we say that the INEC chairman will go another way? He's right. already been boxed in the corner. The security agencies are boxed in the corner because the commander-in-chief of the armed forces has voted and shown the direction of the election. Excuse me. What I've said is at the level of allegation. It's at the level of interpreting action. It's at the level of translating nonverbal cues. But the point remains that the president of the country has, first of all, flouted the directive of what you should do regarding the system of voting. How then do we expect Professor Mahmoud Yakub to do otherwise or understand any better when the person who gave him another time in office has actually done or gone in a particular direction? So I no, think that I these know. are the kinds of mm. things we must address. The yeah, person in Adamawa, for instance, is a human being. What is the quality of the mindset of the person that has the responsibility of protecting the modus operandi of state institutions? Because the rec should know better than anybody in Adamawa. And if there was anybody who should protect the process of having an election conducted as being free and fair, it has to be the rec. But the rec who is supposed to be the guardian of the constitution as elections are concerned, the guardian of the Electoral Act, as elections are concerned, is the same person that openly violated, that actually abused that process. So for Professor Mahmoud Yakub, the ball is in his court. He has not done well because his foot soldier and Adama just messed up an election. So I guess that that is a fact of the matter. He might actually wow. understand the weight of the staff, 
But of course, it's been very overwhelming, sir. Adini Kunu, uh, always interested in speaking with you. Uh, we enjoy your perspectives all the time. Thank you very much for joining us. And we look forward to having another conversation with you. Yeah. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. I appreciate everybody. Thank you and have a good day, sir. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. All right.